Welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Axios Complete Tutorial Series. In this particular series, we will learn what is Axios, what are some of the features provided by Axios, and um, what are the different variations and of using it in a, a vanilla HTML file. We can we we'll learn how to use it in a, a Node.js, Express.js, and I'll also show you how the same thing applies in React and much much more. After this tutorial series you will be able to completely learn and master Axios and start using it in your projects on a daily basis. With that being said, let's get started. This is a part one of the series. This is a playlist index, uh, what we'll be covering in three parts. In the first part, we'll be talking about the installation features, introduction methods, and some basic uh, get request. In the next episode, that would be more of coding heavy where we will do get, post, put, delete, etc. In the final one, uh, we'll learn how to do concurrent request. We'll see how to set some of the header options. And also we will see some of the uh, error handling of how to handle it properly. So those are the three part series. And I hope you will enjoy this series as much as I am enjoying bringing it to you. All right, so let's start with basic introduction first. So Axios is a simple promise based HTTP client for the browser and Node.js. Axios provides a simple to use library in a small package which has a very extensible interface. Now, there are a couple of important things here that you should know. For one, in most of the React applications or Express.js or Node applications, this is what is used uh, heavily. Okay, that's what number one, Axios is he used heavily. Number two, it's a promise based. That means you can do a lot of stuff with promises like how to return, when to return, what to do with the data that's returned, etc. And HTTP client, right? Which means it will be used for making HTTP request and processing the HTTP responses. So that's all you should know about Axios because you're going to use it really heavy, especially on React and Node.js applications. Let's talk a quick uh, overview about the features that are provided by Axios. Axios provides a uh, uh, helps us in making the XML HTTP request calls from the browser. We can make HTTP requests from Node.js, right? Like, like at the backend, which is implemented in JS, like Express.js or something. It supports Promise API. That means all the HTTP calls are Promise based. We have provisions to intercept the requests and the responses and transform them. We can also cancel requests at any time, and we can transform the JSON data, and it protects from any XSR uh, access or protecting or any attacks. All right, what are the some of the major use cases that you will use Axios in? Some of the common use cases are you will be making HTTP requests in Node.js, you will be making HTTP requests in Express.js, you will be making HTTP re requests in React apps, and also in plain vanilla index.html also. All right, so what are the different ways of using, right? So there are three flavors or four flavors that we can use in different ways. The first and the foremost simplest way, let's say you're not using any advanced framework like React or Node.js, Express, etc. You're just building a simple HTML page where you want to make a call, right? And HTTP calls. For that, you can use Axios as well. So I'm going to show you that also first, then we'll go towards the Node and Express.js. All right, so the fastest way to use uh, is Axios CDN. So you can search for Axios CDN and you'll find many um, of them. You can use you use JS Deliver. You can use any, uh, any particular uh, CDN that provides you with any link, okay? So here you see you have the link, copy that script link. And now we are learning about how to use it in a simple way. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to first create a folder and I'm going to name it learning Axios right and then we are going to I'm going to open so this is a simple um, HTML file so inside this I'll create a simple say index.html head tag body okay and what we're gonna do is throw in a button and say on click get data is a method we'll implement all right and what you'll do is in the head section include that script that we copied which is nothing but the CDN link to the axios.min.js 
and here on button we are just calling a method all right so here you have the script and here you can just start using axios okay so let's implement that method and say get data and we can implement our axios implementation here all right so what is the simplest way to get started like i said you just have to make a simple http call and you can get your things done okay so let's go ahead and do that now so i'm going to simply type axios dot get okay so axios the library it's the method object and then the method you'll call is dot get okay now when you say dot get you need a url so the best way is a json placeholder api you can try that it's a free fake rest a restful api so you can copy this url and play with all the crud operations or any dummy request you want to make so copy this uh, url and go back to our application and i'm saying make a call to axios dot get that means use the get method and then call the url which is the json placeholder api that we are using now here is a tricky thing you can then do dot then okay and then it will take a function which would return a response so here we'll get the response <coughs> I'm closing i closed it here okay and then you can also do dot catch of the promise failure right if there is anything failing you can always uh, and you can close it here so that's your basic structure of any axios object that you will create for making a request now you can just log it here say response console dot log error okay that's it simple so if you simply want to use an in an html file all you need to do is include the cdn and call this method and implement the axios as it is in the method right let's see this in action now all right so i have this button let's also open inspect and now i'll click on this method and it is getting the data and if you see the data that it we have got it's getting the correct data which is from the api that is getting the id of number one with title to test this you can also change the values here and make it 10 or any value you want say 5 whatever you want refresh click now your data will have title 5 right so that's a plain vanilla implementation of uh, axios in any normal html file that you can start using the next way is i'm going to show you how to use it with node and express kind of a setup because that's where you'll be mostly using or with the react app it, the methods the implementation is same how you call it will be little different okay so let's go to that and let's set up expressjs.com and I'm going to really quickly create a um, folder inside this and say express underscore tutorial all right and then we are going to go to into all right so I have my terminal open and what I'm going to do is npx express generator this will create a quick express application the dummy one that comes up so it created and we can see here inside this we have our express application so go into express we are already inside that okay so all we need to do is npm run start and we didn't do npm install so let's do that and now do npm run start so our server is up and running okay that's the fastest how do we know we can go to localhost 
20,000 and it should say Express, right? So our Express server and an application is up and running on Express. Now, let's close this and install Axios. So Axios is installed. Now let's go ahead and implement that in any app.js. If you see this file, the first route goes to index router. Click on that. So we'll implement it here. We'll say const axios is equal to require axios that's it so if you're writing a react app you'll probably be writing it as an import statement right in express and node.js we write it as require in react you'll probably be writing import axios right all right so that being said once you are here let's say you want to make a axios call you will again do the same here you'll pass the properties and same method that we implemented earlier right so how do we do that same just exactly same way let's follow the same process okay okay let's meet right otherwise copy it from so i'm just copying it from here just to show you that it remains same okay all right so there we are so now we have just copy pasted the same code that we wrote for standalone um, Axios usage inside the index.js. So now when we call index.js, we should see it in the log. Right, now let's go ahead and reload this. We should see it logged here, you see. It made a call to this API and it console logged the message. But let's say we want to send data, right? So you can do that as well. Instead of this hard coded value, we'll say response dot data dot title, right? Because it's inside the data object and the attribute we are mapping is title. Perfect. So now when I reload, I should see the dynamic title that's coming from the API, right? So that's how you um, include this is this tutorial is mostly about how to get started with Axios. Um, I showed you with uh, standalone in a simple HTML. Just include the CDN, and you can make the calls. Or if you are working on a Node or Express setup, you would install it via npm and require, and then start using that object. All right. So once you create an instance of Axios, you can start using methods like get, post, put, delete which we are going to learn in the next episode. So I'll keep it short for now because the reason is I want you to know um, how to start using, okay? So some of the things that should you should know about Axios is, Axios will support uh, these HTTP methods like get, post, put, and delete, right? If you convert them into other way, you this becomes part of your CRUD operations, right? Like create, read, update, and delete. So that's the current operations basically maps to HTTP methods, which are get, post, put, and delete. We saw the example of uh, get, right? And just this is just a beginning kind of way to make you give a uh, heads up and warm you up with the syntax and the code that we'll write. But we saw this example. And in the next episode, we will cover about in detail about get, post, put, and delete. We'll also see how to pass query params, etc. I hope you are enjoying this series as much as I am enjoying bringing it to you. If you like this video, please do subscribe to my channel, hit the like button. If you have any queries or doubts, write to me at surya.arathi at gmail.com. Thank you so much for joining. We'll continue this series. I'll see you in the next part.